Hi friends, I'm excited to announce the release of an update to my device matrix plugin for Ableton Live. In the new version, you can control more tracks, more devices, and overall the matrix works faster thanks to the JavaScript. I believe device matrix will be especially useful during the mixing stage, though music producers working in Ableton Live may also find it very helpful. So, let's start the overview. After downloading the plugin, place it in your Macs for Live Devices folder. This folder is usually located in your Ableton Live user library. Place device matrix on the first track or create a dedicated audio or MIDI track for the plugin. Important: Device matrix must be on the first track in your Ableton Live project. As you can see, the interface has slightly changed. Just like in the first version, to gather information about your project, click the Get Devices button. This process takes around maximum 3 to 4 seconds, depending on your project's size and your computer's performance. Version 2 of the plugin can handle up to 100 Ableton Live tracks and up to 1000 devices and plugins. Note that the plugin control panel now remains visible even when you scroll down. I recommend starting by importing the project's color code. To do this, click the color button. Keep in mind that frozen tracks will be displayed in light blue. The new version also includes a dedicated field that shows the number of VST plugins used in the project. A new button has been added to the first column, which allows you to turn off all devices except the first one. This is useful when you want to hear how the instrument sounds without any effects. The new version also introduces the ability to visually highlight specific groups of effects, reverbs, delays, saturators, and dynamic processing effects. The search works based on a predefined set of keywords, so if you're using an uncommon VST plugin, it might not be detected. However, for most cases, the search works quite effectively. One of the major updates is the ability to edit directly from the matrix. You can now adjust pan, mix knobs for most effects and plugins, as well as size and decay for reverbs, and drive and output parameters for saturators. For example, let's try editing parameters of the ROAR effect. Create a ROAR device, then click Get Devices to refresh the project data. By the way, just a reminder, the Get Devices button is not only for gathering project info, it's also used to update the information. You should click it after adding, moving or deleting devices or when adding new tracks. So, we've created the raw device, now let's edit its parameters directly from the device matrix. Let's do the same with a reverb. Another useful feature in the updated version is the ability to arm a track directly from the matrix. To do this, click the arm button and select the desired track from the first column. Use this feature only when truly necessary. In all other cases, I recommend keeping it deactivated. And one more small improvement that might come in handy, especially if you're working on a large project with many tracks. Click the focus button. This will highlight the entire row of the matrix, making it easier to navigate your project. Of course, this plugin won't magically make your mixes better, but it can definitely help optimize and even speed up your workflow. And that's something we all value these days. I hope you enjoy the update. I look forward to your comments and will do my best to implement your suggestions whenever possible. Good luck and stay tuned for more updates.